T-so-called Blue Pill STM32 development ports are available on eBay and AliExpress for as low as 175. That's less than two bucks. And for that price, we get microcontroller with ARM Cortex M3, CPU core, 12-bit ADC, DMA controller, decent amount of flash and RAM. And what I found interesting is this can be programmed to act as a USB device. Unlike the quite similar looking Arduino Nano, these do need an external programmer or an USB to serial converter for flashing the firmware. I highly recommend getting at least one of these ST-Link clones from eBay or AliExpress. These cost about two or three bucks, which is a great price considering these devices supported on most of the programming softwares. I must say, I'm just a beginner when it comes to these STM32s, but I managed to make a project that uses the STM32 as an USB device that shows up as a serial port on the computer, and I can send data between the microcontroller and the PC. I'm using STM32 Cube MX software to make the base for the project. I'm starting from scratch, so I click New Project, and then I need to select the microcontroller I'm using. So the line is STM32F103, and we can find the exact microcontroller, which is STM32F103 C8. I selected by double-clicking it, and the first view that opens shows the microcontroller spin out. And let's start with a basic configuration for this board. First there's the LED on the pin PC13. So I set it as an output by clicking the pin and then selecting the output option. Next one is the clock. So I go to RCC which is reset and clock control. And I set the high speed clock option to crystal or ceramic resonator. Then I will go under the SYS for system and enable serial wire debugging. Now that is how I would configure just about any project I would do in future with this development board. And next I will enable the USB. First thing to do is go down here under the USB and enable the device. Then after that has been enabled, I'll go up here under the middlewares, under the USB device. I choose the correct class. I'm going to use this as a serial port, so I will use the communication device class. After I've selected that, that's all for the peripherals. I don't need to enable anything else. Next I will go to clock configuration tab, and there it will automatically say that the clocks haven't been configured correctly, and it is saying those can be fixed automatically, and I will click yes and the problems have been fixed. Then I go to configuration tab. I'm doing one optional thing, and that is setting the default state of the pin where the LED has been connected. So I select the CPIO, and there I select the PC13, and set the output level to high. This is because these ports have the LED connected, so that it will shine when the CPIO pin is low, and I prefer LEDs being off by default. Now everything has been configured and I'm ready to generate the code. But first, let's go to project settings and change the toolchain slash IDE to SW4STM32, which is the system workbench for STM32, which is the IDE I'm using. Then I give some kind of name for this project, for example, USB serial test, and check that the project location is correct and hit OK. Then I can go to project generate code. The code has been generated and I can click open project to open that generated project on the system workbench for STM32. All the necessary files have been generated, but there's one problem. This project won't compile correctly. It gives error while compiling and that is because of some characters not being escaped correctly or something like that. By googling the problem, I've seen that many other users have had the same error and I hope this will be fixed in some future versions of STM32 Cube MX. But for now, I can fix this on properties of this project by going to C slash C++ build and their settings and there under the compiler, 
slash symbols. Select that and delete the two entries which have underscores in them. This is a quick fix which makes the project compile and work properly. If the project compiles correctly without doing this, don't delete these entries. It's not necessary. But in my case they were causing problems, I removed them and now the project compiles without any errors. So that is good and it's time to write some code that will receive data from the computer using the virtual serial port which I created by just making few clicks on the STM32CubeMX software. There's an existing function in the file uspd underscore cdc underscore if dot c which will handle the data coming from the computer to the STM32. And on the right panel I select the function. The function is cdc underscore receive underscore fs. I click that and the code editor will jump to that function's definition. And as we can see on the comment, the brief of this function is data received over USB out endpoint are sent over cdc interface through this function. Yep, that's the function we want. This function will be called when there's data available and the buff is the buffer that includes the data that has been received and len is the length of the is the length of the data so how much there's data available I'll write a simple if statement that will compare the first character on the buffer and if it is 1 turn on the LED and if it is 0 turn off the LED. CPIO will be controlled using HAL underscore CPIO underscore and I think it is right but to be sure I'm using code completion by pressing control and space and I'm using that for arguments as well. So first one is the port CPIO C and next Next one is the pin cpio underscore pin underscore 13 and then the state. So I need to set that to low because the LED will shine when the pin is low. Then else if the first character is 0 then I will turn off the LED by writing 1 to that cpio pin. This is quite a crude example. I'm only checking the first structure on the buffer. So if I'm getting random data from the serial board, the LED might turn on and off if there's 0 and 1 as a first structure. But that's okay as I'm just trying to confirm that the communication is working. So now there's the if statement that I can build this project. And that is a success build has been finished without errors. Then I need to configure the programming or debugging interface. I will go to run configuration, double click the AC6 STM32 debugging to create a new configuration. And then instead of doing what I'm doing on the screen right now, you can close this run configuration window and double click the USB serial test.cfg file on the project explorer to open the script file like this. In my computer it was open opened in notepad plus plus and on the last line there's reset underscore config line and I modify it to be reset underscore config space trst underscore only nothing else on that line then I save that file and click run if you close the run configuration window press the green and white play button on top of the IDE the program gets flashed on the microcontroller On the device manager. First I have COM1 and LPT1. If I then unplug and plug the STM32's micro USB, there will be USB serial device COM4, which I will next test with serial terminal. I'm using PuTTY, but you might be using something else. The main thing is to select COM4 as it was in the device manager. And the board rate can be just about anything. If I select 9600, it will work. If I select 115200, it will also work. It doesn't matter what it is. Now I press 1 and 0 buttons on my keyboard and the LED lights up on button 1 and turns off with button 0. So that works. But the communication is still going only on one direction from computer to microcontroller. And next I will add something else inside the if statement instead of just turning the LED on and off. I will print something on the serial board and for that there's cdc underscore transmit underscore fs and it has arguments buff and len which are the 
buffer and length of the buffer, just like with this receive function. So to transmit something, let's first create the buffer, which I will call data, and it will include text receive. Now let's call it LED on. That's an character array. And I will send it using the cdc underscore transmit underscore fs. I will give arguments data and strlen data, which is length of the string in that data array. I'll just quickly copy paste these two lines to the if statement that will be run if the character is zero. I'll just change the on to off. Then I will pull the project to see if there is any obvious errors, but no, there isn't. Then I will flash the firmware to the STM32. And once that has been done, I will unplug and plug the micro USB cable to the development board. Then I will open PuTTY again and again COM4, which was the name of this board on the device manager. And now when I start pressing 1 and 0, the STM32 is responding LED on, LED off, in addition to blinking the LED like it did before. So that is a success. Serial communication over USB on both directions. And that is what I want to do in this video. I hope someone will find this video useful. If you haven't yet liked this video, please do it now and subscribe if you haven't already.